for questions? Dave. Dave, a friend of an ESPN. Toronto, uh, throughout the course of the playoffs, several guys on your team have been preaching about trying to accomplish a 48-minute game. <coughs> and even you know, James Jones used the term perfect game to me. You've been chasing a perfect game. Does this qualify as a full 48-minute game, a perfect game? Um, it was it was a good forty eight minute game for us, you know, on both ends of the of the ball. Um, I thought defensively again, I thought we really set the tone um, to start the game, and that really opened up our offense for us. And you know, we played all the way through for forty eight minutes, and um, that was a good game for us. And um, but you got to give credit to the team for you know starting their first half defensively was really what what set everything up. Joe, Joe Barton, Team dot com. Ty, after a night like tonight, I, I hate to ask about worry, but in a game that's so non-competitive so early, do you worry about your guys getting hurt? Do you worry about guys losing focus and you know just just getting off course? You know when when things are are that lopsided. No, I mean it's one game. I don't care if you win by two hundred points. It's one game, and we know this team is you know a very scrappy team. They play hard. They compete. And, um, you know, we made shots tonight, and uh, we had a good, you know, defensive effort. But, you know, they're greatly coached. We know that, and you guys all know that. So, I mean, you know, we're going back home. We're not going to get comfortable. You know, we understand that this is a good team. They're not number one in the East for no reason, you know. So, you know, tonight was one of those nights, and um, that's it. We won, but we got to move on. We got to get focused for game three. Back left. This one was effective, efficient, uh, and he was doing it, and, and he just did so many different things. Can you describe in any way the level he's playing at right now? Um, we were having this talk for a long time now, but he's playing at an unbelievable level, and um, he's really setting the tone for us early in the games. And you know, we're getting stops defensively, and we're we're guarding the way we've been guarding. Um, he's able to get out in transition and get to the basket, and you know, when he's making his three point shot. I mean, you in for a long night, so. Um, he's been really setting the tone for us, and we've really been riding him. And then, you know, first game, Caleb was great. He was good again tonight. You know, Kyrie, you know, shot the ball, you know, great tonight, 8 for 11, 23 points. And then I just thought Shump, you know, defensively, you know, on Isaiah, you know, putting a bigger, stronger guy on him, you know, just trying to wear him down because, you know, Isaiah's a tough cover. Um, he's not second team all NBA for no reason, you know, top three in the league in scoring. So, you know, he's a tough cover. And, the things they run for him and put you in bad positions and tough positions, especially with Al Horford being a stretch five. So, you know, that's why I'm pleased most of all, just our defense and, you know, how we just kept reacting and kept moving and kept scrambling. Chris. Ty, Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. You mentioned Kyrie in the first quarter. All four of his made baskets were in the paint. When he's getting into the paint like that for your offense, how does that open things up and maybe even change what Boston was trying to do? Well, when he's getting into the paint, you know, we have shooting on the floor, you know, it's tough. You know, you got to pick your poison. And, you know, tonight, you know, we made 19 threes. And, you know, we get into the paint, you know, either Kyrie and Bron can finish or they kick out for three. So, um, you know, we're shooting the ball well. It's a tough dilemma, you know. So it was just – it was good seeing him aggressive early and playing with that pace. You know, I thought he played with a, with a great pace, you know, to start the game. Go ahead, Jason. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. You had some hard decisions to make late in the regular season about if you're going to chase seeding or if you're going to rest guys, and you obviously chose to rest guys. To do what you did in these two games, does that give you any sense of indication or anything that obviously you made the right decision when you could have gone the other way and tried to chase the seeding? Um, not really. You know, like I said, it's, it's only two games. You know, the series is not over. Um, but you know, for me, I just wanted to make sure we were healthy and we could start the playoffs healthy. And I knew that it, I knew if we did that we would have a good chance of you know being pretty good. So um, give us rest and health, and then we got to figure it out from there. But you know, to be a championship team, you got to win on the road anyway. And the last two finals we've been to, we had to start off on the road because you know out west the way they're playing um, is tough. So either way it goes, if you're going to win, you're going to be a championship team. You have to win on the road. So you know, we just kind of just chose health and rest, you know, over everything else. Marla. Marla Ryden, now our Akron Beacon Journal. Um, was there ever a point where you were almost incredulous that this is the conference finals and it's not supposed to be that easy, I guess? Or no, I mean, it was just one game, you know, and they had a rough night, you know, scoring the basketball. And we played, you know, we put together a, a, a full game. And um, 
defensively and offensively. And it was just one of those games. And um, you can't bank on that every single night. And it just, you know, they had a tough night shooting the basketball, which is not going to happen every single night. So um, it's one game. It's over. We got to move on. And we got to stay focused for game three. Ty, uh, shortly before tip-off, the NBA released the finalists for the regular season awards, and including and it was the top three for MVP, and LeBron was not included. I wanted to he just, wasn't on the list, you said? He was not included in the top three. <laughs> uh, I wanted your, your comment on that and also uh, the timing of, of the, the league re releasing finalists uh, in the middle of the playoffs. When did it come out? It's about 10 minutes before tip. Oh, he might have seen it then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, who, are, who was the top three guys? Oh, well, I mean, those, those guys had MVP seasons, and um, – you know, you got to give the award to some different people every now and then. And I, I look at LeBron like Shaq. You know, I think every year he's MVP. And you can give him the award every year, you know, um, if you wanted to. And when guys have incredible seasons, you know, like James Harden did and Westbrook and, and um, Kawhi, then you kind of credit those guys and give those guys, you know, the nod. But to me, I mean, LeBron's MVP. Just like Shaq, you can give it to him every year if you wanted to. Got that, Joe? I see you placing your, your damn camera right there. Front left. You want to? Bob Schron, the citizen. Um, Todd was going to ask you about um, in the, at the beginning of the game when it, they cut the lead to 11 to 10, you called timeout. Um, what did you say to the guys at that point? And then if I could follow up on David. Um, toward the end of the season, there was all the talk about Russell or James. Was that something that LeBron was – I don't know if he took it personal, but they had two phenomenal years. I mean, those, I mean, those guys played great. I mean, unbelievable. You know, Russ to average a triple double, and you know, James to switch positions and be a point guard and lead his team to you know the third best record in the NBA. You know, so they had unbelievable seasons. So you can't you know knock those guys. Um, your first question was what? Oh, eleven ten. Um, I just thought we was a little lax on defense. You know, we gave Joe Green a couple looks that we didn't want to give him early. Um, kind of lazy getting out to him. And we knew that he could shoot the basketball and he can spark their offense. So I called a timeout just to get us back locked in defensively, you know, get to him. Um, let's not give him any open shots, any confidence, because we know he can score the basketball. Uh, Philip O'Connor of the Reuters News Agency. Uh, we've spoken a lot about LeBron's offense here this evening, but he had, I think, four steals and three blocks in the game. What does he bring to your team defensively, apart from that? Well, when we're blitzing and we're rotating and we're scrambling, um, he's probably the best, you know, f to have on the back line because he reads situations so well. And um, he has instincts. And, you know, you throw the ball in a bad position, you know, he's coming to get it. So having him on the back line defensively, you know, is great for us. And then, you know, his chase down blocks, you know, like when he had the one he had on Avery was, you know, unbelievable. So um, those are game changers for us. And um, just having him on the back line, they, you know, talking and anchoring our defense and talking and protecting on the back line is, is big for us. Middle. Matt Medley, BTH. Uh, you know, what can you say about the defensive job you guys have done on Horford? You know, obviously Tristan is responsible for a lot of that, and he's been on him in a few playoff series the past few years. But the way you guys have been able to limit Horford in these first two games, uh, just what can you say about that? Well, I just think, you know, Tristan is just so versatile. And, you know, he can show, he can blitz, he can switch. And, you know, with Horford, you know, he was shooting 58% from three coming into the playoffs. And that's because a lot of fives were guarding him. They were dropping and couldn't get back to him. So we just wanted to give him a different look because we know he's a dangerous player. And um, he's a key to the offense. They run a lot of offense through him at the top of the key. Um, when he's picking and popping and making shots, they're dangerous. So we just wanted to give him a different look. And um, Tristan's been doing a good job of, you know, showing on Isaiah and getting back to him and, you know, trying to make him put the ball on the floor. So just trying to mix it up and just keep him all balanced. Gary. So, hi, Gary Wash with Boston Globe. Um, the halftime, what do you say to your guys after a half like that? And what do you say after the game? Well, before the game, I mean, at halftime, just – you know, keep our composure, you know, play the play the game the right way. And, um, you know, don't be satisfied. You know, we're doing something and looking for something 